Okay, what's up guys? Uh, welcome to another Math Pixel YouTube video, which is obviously common on my very active YouTube channel. So I'm going to show you what I think is the most simple way to invert a 3x3 three three matrix. Um, math teachers hate this one simple trick. Okay, so firstly, let's go over the basics. So yeah, um, say that we've got matrix A, which is some random matrix I got. And okay, so let's multiply this matrix A by some other matrix, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. And this is going to equal the identity matrix. So what we get from this is obviously by definition, our inverse matrix is going to be that matrix in yellow right there. Okay, so going back to this example, um, the reason that this is useful to set up this way is that well, matrix multiplication is defined by um, the multiplication of rows by columns. So to get the first entry in the resultant matrix, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the first row by the first column. And the way we do that is we take the first element of the first row, so 3, and we multiply that by the first element of the first column, which is A. Then we multiply the second element by the second element, so negative 4 and D, and then 1 and G, right? And then we add them all together. And for the second entry, is the first row by the second column. Third entry is first row by the third column. And the fourth entry will be the second row times the first column and so on. So what's happening when we multiply these two matrices together is that we're gonna get an equation. So for example, the first equation would be 3A minus 4D plus G equals one. Because we're multiplying the first row by the first column and that returns the first result in the matrix. Obviously there are nine entries in the matrix, so we're gonna get nine equations. And I'll show this happening out right now, but you can check it for yourself. Notice how we can group these equations into groups of three, and each of these will form one system of linear equations. And each of these systems of linear equations will have three equations and three unknowns. So theoretically, this should be able to be solved. Uh, so if we focus on the equations in red for a start, well, there's a really nice way that we can express these in an augmented matrix. So essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the variables and we're just going to have the coefficients. We can have, for example, the top row corresponds to 3a minus 4d plus g equals 1. And then the second row would be 1a plus 2d minus 3g equals 0 and so on. Essentially, this is just another way that we can express our system of equations. And we can do this with the two other systems of equations as such. And if we solve each of these systems of equations, then we will have the inverse matrix. If we solve all nine variables, then we will be able to fill out all the unknowns in that matrix. So all we have to do is figure out what to do with this. And Hopefully you can notice that on the left side, the augmented matrices are exactly the same. So what if we put them together? What we have here is a representation of all three systems of equations. So on the right side, the first column represents the first system that we had. The second column represents the second system that we had. And the third represents the third system. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Gaussian elimination on both sides to basically find the inverse and I'll show you how. Essentially if we make the left side look like the right side then what the right side ends up becoming is the inverse and that might not make sense now but we're going to work through this exact matrix and I'll show you why. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to eliminate a variable. So just remember that these numbers represent coefficients of variables so if we make them equal zero, then we're just going to completely eliminate it. So let, look at the second and third rows. We can add the value of the second row to the third row, and that will eliminate that minus one at the bottom left. And the reason this kind of method works is, well, our second equation, let's just use the A, D, and G example in the first row. We have A plus 2D minus 3G equals zero. Right, so if we add a 2d and subtract 3g, that's the same as adding zero. So when we take our third equation and we add a, add 2d, and subtract 3g, we're just adding zero to the final result. 
And obviously we need to consider all three. So in the second system, we're actually adding one. And in the third system, again, we're adding zero. Either way, what's gonna happen is when we add the rows together, we're going to eliminate that first variable in the bottom row. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the third row and we're gonna add the corresponding values of the second row to that third row without changing the second row as such. Now the way that we're going to proceed is that we're going to eliminate that one in the middle row. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to divide the first row by three and then add that to the second row without actually changing the first row. And to eliminate the four in the bottom row, we're going to have to multiply the second row by six over five and subtract. I know it's a bit weird, but it works. And we've nearly solved the bottom row. All we have to do is multiply everything in the bottom row by negative one. And we've actually solved for three variables. So if we think about the bottom row, it's representing an equation in which two of the variables equals zero, and the other one is just the sole variable. And then we've got an equals, and the value is either negative two over five, one over five, or negative one. So we think about what variables we solve for. Well, our first system of equations was a, d, and g. This solves for g. The other one was b, e, and h. This solves for h. And then we've got c, f, and i. And this solves for i. So we've solved for g, h, and i, which in the inverse matrix were the bottom three entries, or the last row. Okay, let's quickly multiply the second row just by three over 10, or divide by 10 over three, essentially. And hopefully the next step comes pretty intuitively to you. We're just going to add row three to row two. And now we've solved for the variables D, E, and F. And again, look where they're placed on the right side. They're placed exactly where they would be in our inverse matrix, which we labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. And now we just need to solve the first row. We're in the home stretch now. Let's add the bottom row to the top row. Okay, easy. And now we're just going to multiply the second row by four and add it to the top row. And now we've solved for the variable, or at least three of the variable. Really, all we have to do now is divide the top row by three. And we've got enough information to solve for every single variable now. But I think firstly, what's important to note is that the left side looks exactly like the identity matrix. And this is what we're going to try and achieve every time we do this. And if we think about this, let's just consider the first row right now. So we've got 1a plus 0d plus 0g equals negative 1 over 5. So a equals negative 1 over 5. D would equal negative 1 over 2. And g is going to equal negative two over five. And we could work with the second set of simultaneous equations. So we would get, for example, B equals three over five, E equals one over two, and H equals one over five. And hopefully you can see the pattern here. The first entry in the right side is equal to A, the second is equal to B, third is equal to C, and so on. Just like we set up our initial inverse matrix with the variables A, B, C, D, F, G, H, and I. So what we can conclude is the right side is actually equal to our inverse matrix. Yeah, so thank you for watching this video. That's gonna be it for today. And hopefully this helps you understand why this method works. And if you wanna practice this, there's a lot of good tutorials online. Look to like Organic Chemistry Tutor, for example. But yeah, I hope you have a happy new years if you're watching this during New Year's. Also, happy birthday if you happen to be going through a birthday. And yeah, one quick thing. Oh, this method will work with any N by N matrix. So just keep that in mind. But no one likes to show off. So yeah.